I think Wall Street and the general investment community makes investing a lot more difficult than than what it needs to be. I, I want you to bring investing down to your own personal level and ask you, what do you have to do in order to keep your house, your car, and, and your family fed? And I think you're going to a- answer it. I got to keep up with inflation. I've got to have my income grow faster in fl- than inflation. And if, in fact, I want to grow my my wealth, I've got to generate uh, income, earnings per share, uh, so that I can build a nest egg so eventually I can retire. Well, companies don't retire, but they are, they ha- they are controlled by the same parameters. They have to keep up in- with inflation. If they don't, they won't be able to keep up with paying their employees, paying their electric bill, their water bill, and, and, and expanding their business. They have to keep up with inflation. And yet, I'm going to show you, we in invest in companies and, and, and tote them as, as money-making machines who don't keep up with inflation. And then we look at it and say, well, they pay a dividend and, and they're, 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 they, have, they make a lot of money. Yeah, and they pay their executives exorbitant salaries, but they're dying. If they aren't keeping up with inflation, they're dying. The same as you. If you don't keep your income up with inflation, the bank will repossess your house because you won't be able to pay the mortgage. You won't be able to pay the car payment because inflation is going to eat all your earnings at the grocery store and the gas pump. We know that. We're experiencing it right now. But use that same logic to pick the companies you're going to invest in and understand, are they making any money? Are they keeping up with inflation? I'm going to show you some companies here that are going to shock you. One I'm not going to show you, and I want you to go look it up on your own because it's going to, you're, you're going to walk away and say, oh, my God, Exxon, XOM, go look it up. See if they're going to live to see uh, 2030, okay? Now, let me take you and show you, first of all, some companies you know and, and, and trust Jim Cramer tells you they're good. And then I'm going to show you what growth stocks look like. And then I'm going to show you what a moonshot looks like. Watch this. Okay, what I want to do here, as I said, is show you how I buy stocks. And I'm going to start by showing you how I determine whether I don't want to buy a stock. This is General Motors. And the first thing I look at is their uh, earnings per share. And as you can see, they're showing that their earnings per share are going to be $9.45 in 2024. And that's a growth growth of 23%. But look at the next couple of years. Uh, a, a growth of 0.39, uh, a growth of a negative 1.5 uh, a negative 9.1. That tells me that they're they're anticipating that their earnings are going to go down. Let's look at how their revenues are growing. This is 2.27, 1.38, and in 2026, 1.14. They're not keeping up with inflations. So why would I want to own this company? This is another company that Jim Cramer totes quite oftenly. Uh, Procter & Gamble, a money-making machine. Well, let's look at and see. Uh, annual revenues anticipating growth in 24 of 11%, 6%, 7%. So we have a total there or an average there of somewhere around 8% growth. Let's look at their uh, revenue growth, three point or three percent, three percent, three percent. That's not keeping up with inflation. So this is a company. Again, think of it as your own earnings. If your earnings aren't keeping up with inflation, if your revenues aren't keeping up with inflation, you're a dying uh, individual. Let's look at another one that I think you're quite comfortable or knowledgeable of. This is Coca-Cola. It's uh, earnings per share are growing at five, six, seven. Give that an average of six percent per year. Let's look at their revenues: a negative one uh, percent, a positive five, a positive five. So they're growing at somewhere around four, four and a half percent. Again, is that keeping up with inflation? Just barely, but they are paying a dividend, and that's why Warren Buffett continues to hold them. Now let's look at some growth stocks. This is Amazon. This is then their uh, earnings per share. 
growing this year at 56, 26, 29, call it 30. So there we have a, a growth factor of somewhere around 26% per year on, um, on earnings. Let's look at revenues, uh, 11, 11, 11. That's ahead of inflation. So that gives me some comfort that this company is going to continue to grow and I want to be a part of it. Let's look at Apple. Apple is showing growth in uh, earnings per share of 7.3, 9.4, 10.7. So that gives us, and look here, it, it gives us a 24 in 2007. But this gives us an average of somewhere around 9% in earnings per share. Then we look at um, their growth in revenue, and we have 1%, a bad year this year, 6, 6, and then 10. So we can say they're growing at about 6, 7% per year. That's certainly better than what GM, Procter & Gamble, uh, Coca-Cola were doing. This is Palantir. Again, what are we getting in um, uh, earnings per share? This year, a good 32%, 19, 18. This is a growth stock. This says we're going to make profits and we're going to make above average products, profits. We're going to outdo General Motors and Procter and & Gamble. How about um, revenue? 21, 20, 18, 29. So they're growing at about a 20% per year. That's a growth stock. This is NVIDIA. How are they growing? Well, their earnings per share grew, uh, are growing in 2025 at 94, 25, and 20. So there we have 140. That's about an average of 70% a year. How about their revenues? 84, 25, um, 18. So that's at a, somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 over three years. That's a 40% growth. That's a growth stock. That's what we want to invest in. So do you see how if, if you will just look at two elements of how a stock is doing in their objective to grow revenues and to grow profits, you can make an easy decision. Now let's look at some something on a little bit more uh, elaborate scale. This is one of my moonshots. Um, its earnings are growing at uh, 146% and 123%. They're on top of revenues that are only growing at 14 and 16%. Does that look like a stock you might want to own? This is another moonshot stock that's about a $4 stock. And as you can see, they aren't making money. They're losing 23 cents, 14 cents, uh, 5 cents, and then they say in 27 they're going to make um 22 cents positive. That's a negative 16, a positive 40, a positive 60, and the, and the computer can't do the calculation there. It's substantial. Then we look at their, their revenues growing at 19, 56, 55, 38. Is that a stock you'd like to own starting at $4 a share? Here's another one of my moonshots. Um, revenue or earnings per share, again, negative. Uh, growing at 22 and then 33, and their um, revenues are growing at 53 and 46 percent. This is how I determine if a stock is something I want to invest in, if it has the kind of potential. And again, I believe there's only two ways to make big money in the stock market. That is one, to find a depressed stock, or number two, to find a stock that is just being born and is going to change the world. That's what my moonshot stocks are.